You ever play GTA Vice City? Well, the remastered Definitive Edition is releasing soon, and we're going to break down some necessary information. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, GTA Vice City Definitive Edition, 10 Things You Need to Know. Now, for some, this might seem a little silly, but there are actually multiple generations of gamers who have not played this game, so we're going to get them ready for the re-release. We've got the new trailer and old footage, but I want to make it clear we're not going to spoil anything from the original game, so let's get started off with with number 10, the story is a huge upgrade from Grand Theft Auto 3. You play as Tommy Versetti, voiced by Ray Liotta, who is sent down to Vice City from his home in Liberty City, the main location from GTA 3, by his boss Sonny Ferrelli to stake a claim in the booming drug trade going on in the city. It's heavily influenced by the movie Scarface, and you can see 80s influences pretty much everywhere. The setting, combined with the era the game takes place in, really goes a long way in creating Creating a unique atmosphere, and even though the game is a prequel to the events of GTA 3, you really don't need to play that game to know what's going on here. Other than a few references here and there, it's a completely separate story, so there's no real issue with starting here if that's what you want to do. This is the game where parody elements really started to show themselves in Grand Theft Auto. I mean, you can see them in 3, but not on the level of this. Like, you see 80s action movie parodies, billboards, that make fun of like all of the politics and policy of the time. You got tons of businesses with joke names, clearly meant to sound dirty. The game has a real story and it's not just goofy nonsense, but there is a lot of humor. And number nine is the music. Now, one of the biggest things that makes Vice City stand out is its music. This has pretty much been a tradition since Vice City. Not that I dislike Grand Theft Auto 3's soundtrack. It's unique and interesting for its own reasons. But here is where we got some of the best music from the 80s, like legitimately one of the best collections out there for people who love 80s music. And as of right now, we don't know for sure how complete the soundtrack's going to actually be. Rockstar has been known to cut songs from new releases and classic classic games because of music rights issues, but either way, the soundtrack should probably still remain excellent even if it's missing a few songs. We just don't know yet. Keeping in mind that Grand Theft Auto has more cash on hand now than ever, and this is a very hyped release, it may not go that way, but this stuff was nostalgic back when the game first came out, so it's basically ancient. It's a lot of awesome memorable music though, and it's probably one of the best things about the game, hands down. If anything, it might introduce a new audience to some of the best music from that decade. Uh, you may not love it, I'll say, because there are people who don't enjoy 80s music, but it does create a great atmosphere for the game, which does take place in the 1980s. And number eight, there's some gameplay updates. From everything we've heard, it sounds like Vice City will mostly play the same as the original version. Most of the changes seem to be in the graphics and controls rather than in the missions or gameplay. So how the game actually plays should remain the same. You drive around an open world, you pick up missions, you steal cars, you do side jobs, all that stuff looks unchanged. So don't go into this one thinking they've rebuilt the game from the ground up. It's Vice City with a new coat of paint. Now with the definitive edition, Vice City definitely does look better than ever. It's got all new character models, some that people are making fun of, like some people think the main character Tommy looks fat. There's also new vehicle models, a totally new lighting system, dynamic weather, better reflections, longer draw distance. Uh, one of the big things though in terms of improving the environment is uh, adding higher quality textures and foliage so that like green area looks more vibrant. There's a lot of improvements to go around and the difference is pretty impressive if you compare the original game to the definitive edition. Now the controls, like I said, are receiving some updates, basically making us so the game functions a little more like GTA 5. Like there's a wheel for the weapons and radio rather than being forced to cycle through it like in the original. Uh, the auto aiming is more responsive and you can use some of the switch specific features to do stuff like navigate menus with touch controls and aim using the gyroscope. Although I don't see myself doing that. So while there does appear to be a lot of quality of life type updates, the basics are going to remain unchanged, and that's great.
At number seven, the Vice City world breakdown and size layout is as such. It's relatively small if you're used to the world of Grand Theft Auto V. But even though it's set on only two islands compared to Grand Theft Auto III's three islands, it is bigger in general than the first of the 3D Grand Theft Autos, even when taking into account the amount of water on the map. One of the things people really like about Vice City is how generally easy to get around it is. The whole city is basically a big loop, and there's a lot of distinct landmarks and locations that make it fairly simple to navigate. Because of the way the city's built, you won't be spending a lot of time checking your map to figure out how to get somewhere, just going in the general directions usually enough. There's a lot of memorable locations to visit too, like there's an Oceanside Beach, there's a stadium, the Malibu Club, which you can actually go inside and see a live show, an entire golf course, and a huge mall to check out. Uh, the whole place is a huge step up from GTA 3. There's so much variety and life to the environments in this game. Even though it's bigger than the previous game, it's obviously much smaller than GTA GTA 4 and 5, but in some ways, that actually makes it more fun. And number six is weapons. Going on a rampage is a big part of the appeal of a GTA game, just grabbing some weapons and doing as much damage as possible. The arsenal here is greatly expanded compared to three. There's a ton of melee weapons, which are fun to play around with. Most fun, it's obviously the chainsaw, which is the perfect weapon for going nuts with. There's grenades, there's a remote grenade specifically, which is great for getting away from the blast radius before you detonate. Usual selection of shotguns, handguns, assault rifles, submachine guns, Stuff like the Tech 9 and Uzi are especially good in this game because of how much more maneuverable you are with them. And the fact they can be used to shoot forward while driving a motorcycle, that's also great. Uh, when you really want to go on a rampage, heavy weapons are the best. The flamethrower, minigun, and rocket launcher specifically, they're all kind of slow to use, but totally devastating against pretty much anything the game can throw at you. All told, there's more than 30 weapons in Vice City, and while not all of them are great, a lot of this stuff is just fun to screw around with. At number five, there's a lot of vehicles you can use. Probably one of the biggest upgrades from GTA 3 to Vice City is all the vehicles they added. Instead of just driving around cars everywhere, you can now pilot helicopters, motorcycles, mopeds, variety of speedboats. The grand total was particularly impressive for the time. Approximately 101 vehicles. That's a lot to work with. And outside of the normal stuff, there's a few basically joke vehicles to try out as well. Like you can actually drive around one of those little baggage handler cars at the airport. You can steal a golf cart off the golf course. They don't do anything, but the fact you can drive them at all is a lot of fun. The two best vehicles are, of course, the heavy military ones. There's the Rhino Tank returning from GTA 3 and the new Hunter Attack Chopper that can blow anything away. Like, they're pretty tough to get normally, and that's why Rockstar made it so easy to cheat in these games. At number four, your goal in this game is to take over the city. One of the biggest new features added to Vice City is that you could buy up assets around the city that have their own set of missions. If you complete them, they automatically generate money. The feature doesn't become available until fairly far into the game, but it's a huge part of the game and adds a small layer of strategy into everything. It's up to you which asset you want to buy first. Each one creates a different amount of money too. Having to go around and manually collect your take can be a little annoying, but it is free money. And at least getting around the city is nice and easy. Without spoilers, we will say that buying a property is one of the requirements you have to do to actually beat the game. You don't have to buy every place, but if you want to see the ending, then you'll need to buy up a good chunk of the places around town. This whole feature was a really cool addition that made the game feel like you were in charge of a criminal empire instead of just a goon taking orders. You're the guy building an empire in this game, rather than being a foot soldier doing the grunt work. I mean, you're still doing all the work, but at least you're getting the reward this time. At number three, there are a ton of side jobs and activities. When you're not doing main missions, there's a lot of other stuff to do in Vice City. A lot of the side jobs like paramedic, vigilante, taxi driver, they return from GTA 3, and there's new ones like Pizza Boy, which give you new ways to make money. Another new feature is that you can rob certain stores. Like you just go in, point your gun at them, and they'll give you some money. Uh, but do not try it at ammunition. They're a little more difficult to deal with. The stadium isn't just there for show either. You can actually participate in a few events inside. There's also street races, assassination missions, collectibles, rampages, and unique jumps as well. So there's a lot to do here. The amount of stuff that's in this game is a huge jump from GTA 3, and there's all around more things to do that are just interesting in general. 
And number two, if you want to know what you have to do to get 100% completion, um, again, keeping it spoiler free, uh, it can take a while. How long to beat it generally says about 40 hours to do absolutely everything, depending on how focused you are. Uh, but to do it, you've got to complete every mission, which includes all the asset missions and side missions. There's a rifle range you have to earn 45 points in, there's seven safe houses to buy, and you have to rob all 15 stores in Vice City. It's a lot of stuff all together, but in comparison to a lot of other open world games these days that can take hundreds of hours to finish, getting everything in Vice City isn't really that bad. And finally at number one is the housekeeping. Uh, the definitive edition of Vice City is coming out on pretty much every platform digitally on November 11th on PlayStation 4 and 5, Xbox One, Series X, Series S, and PC uh, in the Rockstar Games launcher. Unlike GTA 3 and San Andreas, Vice City won't be coming free to any platform. San Andreas is going on Xbox Game Pass and GTA 3 will be on PlayStation now, but Vice City, you have to buy the definitive edition collection. Physical versions of the entire trilogy come out December 7th for Switch, PS4, and Xbox consoles, and it's also going to be releasing on iOS and Android sometime next year. Now for PC, the system requirements are pretty surprising. Windows 10, 64 bits a minimum requirement, and it requires 45 gigs of disk space for all three games. Recommended video cards are an Nvidia GTX 970 or the Radeon RX 570. Neither is particularly cutting edge, but still pretty pretty steep for what are now 20 year old games. Even if these are basically the same old games, the graphics upgrades are pretty significant though, and that does show in their system requirements. So that's all for today. Leave us a comment, let us know what you think. Are you buying these games? Are you gonna play the free ones? Let's talk in the comments. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is of course a subscription, so click subscribe. Don't forget to enable all notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon, you can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.